Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today I'm here with another comparison video. Shocker, it's going to be the Cleveland Indians. Now, we are going to play the Indians several times. Many, many, many several times because they're in our division. <laughs> And um, the first of those times, and really the first and second of those times, the first time will be from April 12th to the 15th, and then we will play them again on the 20th and 21st of April. So we're going to see them six times just in April. So I'm saying we're going to see a lot of the Indians and Detroit and the Twins and the Royals. So it stands to reason I would want to do a comparison video of the White Sox in 2021 to the Indians. Now, if you have seen the Pakoda projections on the internet, which is like, uh, it's like a thing that's associated with uh, baseball prospectus, where they try to predict what every team's record is going to be, in the coming year and where they're going to finish well if you see that and i suggest you go look it up what you're going to find is that the baseball prospectus people did a lot of crack before they put it online because according to them the white Sox will finish third in the division with only 83 wins and the Twins are going to finish first. Now, I can't really fault them for saying the Twins will finish first. That's a possibility. But who's going to finish second, according to the Pakoda projections, you might ask? Well, my answer would be the Cleveland Indians. <laughs> oh, wait, you're serious? Somehow, the Cleveland Indians are going to win 85 games and finish second, ahead of the White Sox according to the crack addicts at Baseball Prospectus. But, can I say crack addicts? I guess I can, because this is my channel. But anyway, um, I digress. In 2020, you will remember it was a shortened season, and we um, only played 60 games, everybody only played 60 games, and we won, we were 35 and 25, as were the Indians. And we were tied with the Indians for second place, although technically we were the third place team uh, because we had a worse record against the Indians. Now, of course, that Indians team had Lindor, and this Indians team does not. So, um, yeah, those people at Baseball Prospectus, they really... They need to make sure that they're clean before they put stuff up on online like that. And by the way, they said that the Atlanta Braves would finish like fourth in the East. They And they say that every year. And every year Atlanta wins the division. So I take some solace in that, that they've been wrong, like really, really wrong before. And the thing that kills me is that they projected that the San Diego Padres will finish second in the West with 95 wins. I guess based on the fact that the Padres have made all these great deals and gotten all these great players, the White Sox had a lot of great players going in, and they obtained a couple. So I don't know. But let's get into this anyway. You know the, you know the drill. I, I just quickly recap what the White Sox are going to look like in 2021, and then I will talk about their opponents, in this case the Indians, and uh, the, the lineup for the White Sox. And again, I get this from RotoChamp, although we will do a disclaimer when we get to the Indians, but I get these off of RotoChamp. So, I mean, the lineups, the rotation, who actually makes the roster, in the case of the White Sox, that's really up to Tony La Russa. 
and uh, you know, so he could make a better lineup than this. In fact, really, Roto Champ, this is a terrible lineup. Maybe they talked to the people at BP. I don't know. But anyway, the, the the White Sox, generally, their lineup lines up something like Tim Anderson leading off at shortstop, Adam Eaton slash um, Adam Engel in right field, depending on who's pitching that day, because Eaton is a left-handed batter and would play against righties, and Engel is a right-handed batter and would play against lefties. Then you got Nick Madrigal at second, Yes, Monty Grandall at catcher, uh, Jose Abreu at first base. Last year, Abreu had 19 home runs in just 60 games. Pretty good. And a 370 on base percentage. Then you got Eloy Jimenez, left field or DH. It depends, and it depends on who actually makes the roster, as you'll see in a little while when we talk about the bench. Johan Moncada at third. Lewis Robert in center last year, Robert hit 251. It was a pretty good rookie season for the first time seeing Major League pitching. He hit only 251, but he did have some power and he was a great defensive center fielder. And then you got uh, Lurie Garcia, who might be the DH, maybe uh, an all around utility guy, or may play left field. He is very versatile, so we'll see how LaRusa um, wants to use him. And again, who makes the roster and maybe puts him on the bench in a super utility role. Uh, their rotation is going to be Lance Lynn. They just got Lance Lynn from the Texas Rangers. Um, then they're, they're going to have Luis Giolito. Last year, Giolito had a 1.04 whip, which is very good. Dallas Keuchel, who they got last offseason, and he had a 199 earned run average for the White Sox in the 60-game season that they had. Dylan Cease, who was okay. I mean, he wasn't great. And then um, Michael Kopech, maybe. Michael Kopech did not pitch last year. He was coming off Tommy John surgery. He was eligible to pitch, but because of health concerns, I guess, and also, you know, concerning the pandemic, he decided he would sit out last season. So he did not pitch. So if the White Sox were to have him in their starting rotation, they might want to start him in the minors and stretch him out a little bit. Uh, they may have to do that. We'll see. Um, but, you know, who knows? So anyway, um, and then you've got... Um, and then you got uh, Ronaldo Lopez and Carlos Rodon. They just obtained Carlos Rodon. And um, he could be a possible swing guy. So could um, Ronaldo Lopez. You're going to have injuries throughout the season anyway. So that's something to, to bear in mind that you would want to, you know, be mindful of. So those guys will probably get some starts. They didn't resign um or they didn't uh they didn't keep rodon because they would have had to pay him a huge bonus to keep him but they let him they cut him they let him walk and then brought him back as a free agent at a lot less money than they would have had to pay him if they'd kept him then you got the uh, bullpen for the white Sox, which is liam Hendricks, who we got from the he was on the a's last year excellent reliever um, and he is um, expected to be the the, uh, the closer. He should replace Colome and in Colome's old role for the White Sox. Then you got Cody Hewer, Aaron Bummer, Evan Marshall, Matt Foster, um, and Jimmy Cordero, Jace Fry, do I even have Jace Fry up there? No, I didn't have Jace Fry up there. But anyway, he is, he's the lefty out of the pen. He will be on the team. So mark him down at home if you're keeping score. And then uh, Garrett Crotchet, who can throw 100 miles an hour. The dude has heat. He can bring the heat. And then you have, um, on the bench, you would have um dan danny mendick nick williams micker adolfo nicky mel nicky del monaco 
and Zach Collins, who would be the backup catcher. Now, if there's a place where the White Sox have an Achilles heel, it may be a catcher. Now, I've heard people say, hey, give Collins a break. We haven't seen a lot of him. He's been highly touted. He is supposed to be a really good hitter. So, yeah, I'm going to cut him some slack, but that's the fact. We don't know that much about him. I'd be more comfortable with an established backup catcher who is known to be a good defensive catcher to back up uh, Grandall because we know Grandall is not going to catch 140 or 145 games. He's well past the age where that's probably something he can do. So we do need a reliable catcher. If Collins proves to be that, that's great. Sign me up. But we just don't know. So now we're going to the Indians. And the Indians last year, as I mentioned, were 35 and 25. They were tied with the White Sox, but they were the second place team by virtue of their record. Their lineup, according to Roto Champ now, and here's where I'm going to do the little um, caveat, because their lineup on RotoChamp, for some reason, was m completely missing a first baseman. They had four outfielders listed, no first baseman. And they had Jimenez listed as the prospectus, prospect, prospective shortstop instead of um, Ahmed Rosario, who they just got from the Mets in exchange for um, Lindor. And I find it hard to believe that he would not be in their lineup. So here is the Roto Champ slash Sportsman Z version of the Indians projected lineup. And that would be Cesar Hernandez at second, Jose Ramirez at third, Eddie Rosario in left, Franmil Reyes at DH, Josh Naylor in right, Roberto Perez, great defensive catcher, excellent defensive catcher, at catcher. Ahmed Rosario, who is also, he's a good defensive shortstop. He just isn't great at hitting, or at least hasn't been all that great at hitting so far. And uh, I'm sure the Indians are hoping he gets better at it. Oscar Mercado in center, and then Jake Bowers at first base, because Jake Bowers is a first baseman. They have other guys, I'm sure, on the bench that can play first base. I just listed Bowers. Who knows? So uh, then you've got the rotation, which is, now the rotation is very good. I could almost see where the BP people think that that's going to be the thing and that might put them ahead of the White Sox, except it's not. Um, Shane Bieber, Zach Playsack, Aaron Savale. But then, see, those three are great. They've proven that they're very good starting pitchers and they're young and they're improving. They've got a lot of experience under their belt now. So yeah, great. But then you got Tristan McKenzie, who I know nothing about, but I never heard of the guy, so who knows? And then Logan Allen, and then also potentially Adam Plutko. Now they have had Plutko for a few years and he is decent, but RotoChamp has him in the bullpen and has Tristan McKenzie and Logan Allen as starters instead of Adam Pluko. Now, the same thing applies to the Indians. They're going to run into injuries. They're going to have yada, yada, yada. Nobody goes, you know, wire to wire with a five-man rotation. So you can expect to see Plutko starting at times, at least. Their bullpen uh, is James Karanak. Karanak? I don't know how you pronounce that. Nick Whitgren. Now, Nick Whitgren is uh, potentially one of their closers or their closer, and he has been very good in the past. Emmanuel Chase, I don't know much about him. Kel Contrill, Quantrill, he's been around a while. Pretty good uh, reliever. Phil Maton has, uh, he's been up and down from the majors to the minors. He's been on the Indians roster, obviously. Not really a great talent, but, you know, who knows? At least not up until now. I don't think he has been. Keith Hembry, who was on the White Sox for a time, Cameron Hill, and Brian Shaw. Now, that isn't exactly the scariest uh, bullpen in the world, but it isn't terrible. 
especially if some of the young guys that I don't know anything about, like Cameron Hill and Emmanuel Chase, are actually very good. If you're an Indians fan, leave a comment below. Let me know how good those guys can be or are. Hey, always willing to be educated here. And then you got the bench, which is Andres Jimenez leading it off, which, um, as I said, uh, Roto Champ thinks he might be the shortstop over Rosario. Somehow I doubt that. Then you got Brad Zimmer, um, Yu Cheng Shang, Austin Hedges, who would be the backup catcher. And he is, again, a very good defensive catcher. They got him from San Diego. But again, he really can't hit. It's kind of like Roberto um, Roberto Perez, except that he's even worse at hitting than Roberto Perez. Perez has improved his offense in recent years and is now at least uh, passable offensively. Actually, at times, even pretty good, I might even say. But um, Hedges, no, he doesn't fit that category. Jordan Luplau, who I think can play first base and has played first base, um, so he's a possibility at first. Billy Hamilton, sliding Billy Hamilton. Very fast, good defensive center fielder. Again, can't hit. This seems to be a running theme with the Indians. They have a lot of guys that can't hit. They're good. They have other things that they can do. They're good defensively. They can run. They are speedy. Speedy. But they can't hit. And Michael Freeman. Michael Freeman, I think, is a first baseman as well or can play first base, um, but he's he's mostly untested. So we'll have to see what happens there. And then Bo Taylor. Now, um, if you are an Indians fan, let me know where I'm off on some of this because I'm sure I must be because Roto Champ wasn't even helping me out in this particular case. So um, yeah, definitely let me let me know. Now, what I would say about this is I still like the White Sox in this matchup. Uh, the pitching, the rotation, the first three, you know what? The first three, I'll even give the slight edge to the Indians. But then the next two slots, especially if Kopech pitches at least half the season, I'm giving that to the White Sox. I mean, you know, unless uh, Tristan McKenzie is some kind of great dude that I never heard of, and he's going to come out of nowhere and be the Cy Young Award winner. Um, and the benches, who cares about the benches? The bullpen, I would still give the slight edge in the bullpen to the White Sox. And the lineup, I'm even going to give the line, I'm definitely going to give the lineup to the White Sox. The, I mean, last year, the White Sox were, um, they were like second in the American League um yeah, they were second in the American League in batting with a 261 batting average, and they were first with 96 home runs. And there's no real reason to think that that's going to go anywhere um, based on this, especially if you can, because, you know, last year we had Nomar Mazzara in right, but now you got the two-headed monster of the Adams, Adam Eaton and Adam Engel, who respectively are very good against the opposite handed pitcher. So that's going to improve our right field, um, our right field, everything probably. Um, and so, like I said, the rotation, roughly the same bullpen. I like the White Sox a little better, at least a little better, maybe even a lot better. Um, the lineup, Definitely White Sox has the edge and the bench, who cares? So uh, that's what I got for you. Uh, let me know what all you guys think. I'm always willing to hear what everyone thinks about um, my comparisons. And uh, if you're an Indians fan, let me know if you think that um, baseball prospectus is right and that your team is going to finish ahead of ours. And, and then I will tell you to get off the drugs, too. So anyway, that's all I've got. That's it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing out.